Hello friends, I am Dr. Monica Dubey, Cosmetic Gynecologist with Hexa Health. Today we will be talking about Cosmetic Gynecology. So many of you must be having this confusion, what actually is Cosmetic Gynecology? So this is a relatively new branch of gynecology which is coming up and the main purpose of this branch is to improve the quality of life for all the females across all the age groups. So what exactly are we doing in cosmetic gynecology? So cosmetic gynecology as the name suggests has two parts cosmetic and gynecology. So many people confuse that this is only for the cosmetic improvement or the aesthetic improvement of the genital parts. Actually that is not right. In this we are doing the functional correction also. So it is a mix of both aesthetics and the functional uh, of the vaginal parts. So there are two parts to it. One is non-surgical or non-invasive procedures and the other are the surgical uh, procedures. So talking about the non-invasive or non-surgical procedures, we have different options in this category. One is laser, wherein the lasers are used for vaginal uh, rejuvenations. PRP techniques are used for the similar uh, procedure and the vaginal bleach is another option. Now coming to the surgical procedures that are covered under cosmetic gynecology. So here we are doing the surgical methods to correct the uh, torn or the lax areas of vulvovaginal area. So if we are doing a correction of loose vagina, it is called vaginoplasty. If we are correcting a torn hymen or which is called a repair of hymen, then the term for that is hymenoplasty. We can also enhance or correct the shape of the labial folds, which is called labioplasty. So in uh, the process of cosmetic gynecology, your consultation is very important. Even a minor complaint from the patient has to be taken very seriously and we shouldn't be you know biased or prejudiced about this and we shouldn't be you know neglecting the complaints. It should be taken very seriously and it should be discussed in length with the patient. So a very minor complaint like I am dribbling little urine while sneezing or coughing maybe once in a while should be taken very seriously because if not addressed this can increase and be very troublesome and embarrassing for the patient. So this uh, is where the part of counselling comes into play, the part where you have to discuss with the patient and make her understand and aware about the different options available to address her concerns. So there is no, as such, there is no age limit for uh, a person to come and ask for a cosmetic procedure. The age is just a number. If you think that you're not happy with what you are feeling or what you're seeing, then you are a perfect candidate to come and discuss your concerns with the doctor. It can be because you're not happy with the kind of your uh, labia looks or it is making you uncomfortable during your intimate time or you're uh, feeling uncomfortable or embarrassed while you're wearing some tight clothing, whatever it may be. Either the reason can be aesthetic or cosmetic or it can be a functional reason. So there is actually no age that can define whether you are a candidate for a cosmetic procedure or not. Talking about the outcomes of the cosmetic procedures, it actually depends on the type of procedure that we are planning, the concern that we are trying to address and the expectations of the patient and the doctor. So as I told you, expectations are very important to be addressed. We should be clear that what we are trying to achieve at the end of the procedure. So all the procedures that I've told you will have different set of do's and don'ts with them and different uh, time limit for the proper result to be assessed. Like suppose if you are doing a surgical procedure, let's say vaginoplasty, then the result would be assessed after uh, two months. If we are doing a laser vaginal rejuvenation, then probably the result would be visible in first two sessions. So it depends on what procedure are we doing and what concern are we addressing during the procedure.